Dear friends, we have a very special program today because we have a young woman who is an artist, very creative, beautiful, but in addition, she is my granddaughter. So she's very special to me. So I'd like you to meet Michelle Brenner, one of my favorite granddaughters. The favorite. We, the favorite. <laughs> we recently published together. Uh, actually, th she did all the art and she did all the design. I say we published together because I want to be next to a very creative person. It's called Birkon. This contains blessings after you eat, before eating, for different holidays. And it has the art of Michelle, as you can see, right here. This is Michelle's creation. And it has Hebrew text on the right side. And on the left side, it has a Hebrew translation and phonetics in Hebrew also, so that if you can read English, you can really pronounce all the Hebrew that is on the other side. And Michelle is the one that created that together with me. So for me, it's a great pleasure today to speak to Michelle and ask her, Michelle, uh, where do you get your talent from? Uh, can I, I, can, I don't know how to uh, design something, how to draw. Uh, I have two left hands. Where do you get that talent from? Well, first of all, all of my, I'm very smart and intellectual because of you, of ah, yeah. course. <laughs> But I, all of my creative abilities, I, they're, they come from my other grandfather. Uh -huh. uh, my grandfather, my mom's father, who I never got to meet, unfortunately. He passed away before I was born. But I've always believed that his talent was passed on to me. Mm -hmm. And I celebrate that every day. I've seen many of the paintings that your grandfather did. Yeah. And tell me, he, he actually didn't have the opportunities that you had because he lived through the Second World War. How did he save himself? Well, I have those opportunities because of him. He saved my family because, he, because of his talent. He was, the Nazis saw that he was a painter, a very talented person, so uh, he was forced to um, make Nazi propaganda for them. Even though he didn't want to, he saw it as an opportunity to save his family, and he did. So that's something that uh, my family, we owe a lot to him, and that's why being an artist is so important to me as well. I see, I mean, in the Holocaust, lawyers, doctors, very professional people, highly educated, they were all sent to concentration camps. It didn't matter what degree you had, but thanks to my grandfather's talent, he survived, and my, grand and my family survived. Mm -hmm. So I say that art gave me life, and thanks to him, I have the opportunities that he didn't have. So I'm very blessed to have his talent, and I use it in a positive way, I, I would think. Tell him, Michelle, you are Jewish, of course, you are traditionally Jewish. Do you find that there is any kind of symbiosis, any kind of interrelation between art and your Judaism? Do the two go together with you? Definitely. I grew up Jewish, of course. My grandfather is a great rabbi of Venezuela. But I love being Jewish as well. I, I grew up loving my culture, my traditions, my family. Uh, we all love being Jewish. And I grew up in a Jewish community in Venezuela. When I moved to um, Miami to go to university, I realized and I got to meet people from different cultures. And I saw that non-Jewish people kind of saw Jews as a taboo when they didn't know much about us. They saw us differently and some people were even afraid to ask me things about my culture. They didn't really know what to ask. And I saw an opportunity there to educate um, Jews or non-Jews or anyone who's interested about my culture, about my language, Hebrew. And I in order to do so, I use my creative talent. I use art to do that. And so what are you doing in that field? Are you combining Judaism with art? How are yes. you doing that? Um, so I've been working over a year on a platform called Hebrew Lesson. So through social media, I teach Hebrew. And the language. The language. And also some aspects of, Jew of Judaism. Mm -hmm. And I use art to do that. I illustrate. For example, I just finished uh, the entire alphabet, the alphabet, yeah. and I used illustrations to teach that. 
to teach the al the alphabet, and I also used I, I illustrated animals to go with the letters, and uh, I got a book out out of it, and people are learning with me. So they're learning Hebrew words together with the alphabet, not just the alphabet. Not just the alphabet. I'm teaching words. I'm teaching sentences. Um, how to pronounce things, I'm teaching uh, Have you adjectives. been to Israel? I have been to Israel, yes. And how do you, do you like Israel? I love Israel. Israel, I, it feels like home, even though I grew up in, I mean, Venezuela will always be my real home, but when I go to Israel, I feel like I belong. And that's something that it's very odd for a Jew to say, that they feel that they belong completely, because we're always uh, the minority. Uh-huh. So, uh, I see that. I'm sorry, I didn't quite get what you were no, saying. I mean, it was odd to feel here, at all. Obviously, in, in, in the United States, we belong, but when you not go the to same Israel, as in Israel, it's not the same. We're, we, it's a, you find people that are just like you everywhere. And the first time I went to Israel, I, I came back uh, wanting to know the language so much better than I already do. And that's kind of also a reason why I started this project, to teach myself how to speak Hebrew better and I've been doing it through art. And I share that at the beginning with my family and my friends and that now it's public and I have a, a very interesting community following me and learning with me. I have Israelites following me. Is that so? Yeah, a, a very, it's, it's, it's amazing to see how people, Israelis. Israelites, like the tribe of Israelites. They, they follow me, also Israelis follow me, also Jews from all over the world, from Brazil, from Portugal, from all Latin America, from Europe. Also, Arabic people, are fo people who speak Arabic follow me, they want to learn Hebrew. And I see that every time I post a picture with a, with a word, they say, wow, that's the same word in Arabic. Hebrew and Arabic are so similar. Semitic languages. Exactly. So it's nice to see a community where people are finding what brings them together and not what sets them apart. Have you done anything else in art, commercially, something? What, what have you done? Yeah. Well, this is, Hebrew lesson is what I do on my free time. This okay. is something I really enjoy doing. Uh -huh. But professionally, I'm an artist and a designer, and I've decorated hotels worldwide. I've made pictures for the rooms, for the common areas. I paint large In what murals. places, for instance? Where? I, a hotel in London, for example, in Puerto Rico. I also have decorated restaurants. Uh, here in Miami, here in Miami, done? also um, stores. And I am, I'm working for myself and going beyond my comfort zone, working with materials that I never thought I'd worked before, uh, like paper, wood, metal, yarn. So I'm kind of living this creative life and having so much fun doing it and always seeking for the next opportunity to expand my creative horizons. You know, Michelle, from what you tell me, you know, there's so much confrontation in this world, antagonism. We always underline the differences between human beings. But you, through art, are working the other way. You are trying to unite people. Art is a universal language. And if, if used in a positive way, the, the outcome is always going to be great. And I think that I am, even though I, I'm doing it in a very small scale for now, I think I'm contributing to that. And I'm really happy to be um, your granddaughter because I know what I'm saying in a way. I, all of your teachings, I'm, I'm passing it on to people. Like every Shabbat that we're sitting in your table, all the teachings that we listen and everything, and all the incredible things you teach us, uh, I'm passing them on. And also I have my other grandfather who gave me the artistic talent. I'm kind of merging these two and giving that to the world. Well, Michelle, you're a young lady. You have <laughs> many, many decades ahead of you and you already have accomplished an enormous amount of initiatives and creativity. I am sure that you are going to leave the stamp of your personality in society. So it's great to see you, you, Michelle, and God bless you and give you many, many more years of great activity. Thank you, Grandpa.